There's a huge one I've seen uh, in my in my Christian walk where where that's the case. Um, can you can you unpack how David and Goliath um, is um, missed a lot by a lot of evangelicals today? Absolutely. Yes. You know, when we think about David and Goliath, if we try to say we are David, he's an example for us, be like David and defeat your Goliath, whatever that giant is in your walk. Right. We must first, we must first acknowledge that is certainly not the gospel. Mm. In fact, the good news of the gospel is that even though we have not overcome sin, <laughs> specific sin, specific sin issues, even though we have not overcome Satan and we're unable in and of ourselves, not to mention the final enemy death, there is one who has and it's quite clear when we put David and Goliath in context of the entire unfolding story of salvation, David and Goliath is actually a beautiful picture of the good news of the gospel, Amen. namely the son of David from the town of Bethlehem, from the tribe of Judah, the anoint, the anointed of the Lord, as David was anointed with oil, the spirit came upon him, setting him apart as a king. And he's the representative. David goes out to face Goliath as the representative of Israel. If David wins, Israel wins. If David loses, Israel loses. So he represents his people. And so if we're going to put ourselves in the story, we're much more like the trembling Israelites on the sidelines in desperate need of the Lord's anointed, the shepherd king from the town of Bethlehem, from the tribe of Judah, who goes out with his shepherd weapon. And yes, the sling and the stone is crucial, but it's a shepherd weapon. Hmm. And so immediately there's so many clues the spirit has put into the scriptures from the tribe of Beth, from the tribe of Judah, from the town of Bethlehem, a shepherd king, uh, David, which means beloved and so on. But when he goes out to face Goliath, Understanding who Goliath is is also crucial. Oh, yes. Goliath is depicted as a serpent figure in oh, the text. Yes. He His armor is, at first, this word armor, it appears for Saul's armor, uh, uh, actually later in the chapter, Shirion armor. But Goliath's armor is armor of scales, scaly armor. Actually, the NIV translates it nicely, armor of scales or scaly armor. And this word for scales is used every other time in the Old Testament for reptiles, sea creatures, Pharaoh the dragon in Ezekiel 29. And so you already have a, a, a pointer to the fact that Goliath is depicted as a beast. Also, Brother Chris, Goliath as a giant, he's a descendant of the Nephilim who then um, become the Anakim. The Nephilim are before the flood, uh, a, a, a people who are a huge people, who are an offspring of the serpent people, uh, children of the devil, as Jesus says, unbelievers are in John 8. But these beastly people are those that the Israelite spies are terrified of yeah. whenever they go and spy out the land in the yeah. book of Numbers. Um, Goliath embodies uh, these Canaanite people groups, these idolatrous wicked idol worshipers who offered their children into the fire, ancient Near Eastern abortions, who indulge in homosexuality, bestiality, and uh, all kinds of immorality, had multiple gods, wicked sinners whom the Lord commissioned Joshua and Israel to destroy and bring God's judgment on. But we know that the judges, they couldn't drive out these nations. And so here comes David, Coming up to Goliath, who embodies these stubborn, wicked, Canaanite, uh, evil idolaters, but who are giants and who are essentially a picture of the serpent himself. Mm. And Goliath also likens himself uh, to a dog, although accidentally. Gal uh, David likens him to a bear or a lion that he struck down. And so who is Goliath? He's the beast. And remember, Satan is the craftiest of the beasts. So if David's a type of Christ, Goliath is clearly a type of Satan. Right. And Chris, I'm not making this up. This is what Jesus says in Matthew 12 and Luke 11. Oh, yes. He depicts 
this uh, David and Goliath story as being about him. First, you must bind the strong man. Goliath is called their strong man, by the way. You must bind their strong man. You must bind the strong man and go in and strip him of his armor. That's exactly what David does. Last point, Brother Chris, how does David take out Goliath? It's the crushing of the head. Mm, yes. And we have the theme of crushing the head of the enemy. And to crush the to crush a, an enemy's head in ancient Near Eastern culture means to give a lethal death blow, to, to take the power away from the enemy. And so when David crushes the head of Goliath and cuts off his head, there's much emphasis on, the, on, on bringing destruction to the power of the enemy. The head crushing of the serpent figure echoes back to the first promise of the gospel. Genesis 3.15 that the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Not to mention, even in redemptive history, the offspring of the woman is the offspring of Abraham. The offspring of David is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Chris, I don't know if you have the chart um, yes. uh, that, that shows how this unfolding, the unfolding of the offspring promise itself uh, works out in redemptive history. Yes. But it'd be dope if you could pull that yeah, up. It's, it's, it's on the screen now. Excellent. And so, uh, yes, this 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 just shows the progressive revelation through uh, through seed form, through acorn to it grows to this giant tree to where we're like, oh, that that. And, and I'm uh, and just to show this, Tim, there's people in the chat that are just saying this seems so obvious. I see it, you know, and 